These crocs slippers are going to be customized with shrink plastic and sponge. I have wanted to go crazy on these new slippers ever since I found out that it's possible to buy croc chum backings online. <clears throat> I'll be making squishies in the middle with sponges and adding a sequence of comics on the rest of the straps with shrink plastic. Oh yeah, there's two pairs of slippers because one is for my husband and one is for me. Since they are couple slippers, I thought it'd be fun to create two very different kinds of creatures and have them meet and fall in love. One is a lotus-inspired cat mermaid and her name is Kitty Fish. This is the story from her perspective. Every day, Pebbles would fall from above the water into Kitty Fish's pond. Her favourite pastime was collecting and stacking them into what she imagined to be beautiful towers. One day, however, she was disappointed to notice that the pebbles had stopped falling. She felt worried and decided to swim above the water to investigate. There, she found a fainted green creature lying on the land, a stack of pebbles beside him. Kitty Fish carefully nursed him back to health and soon they became fast friends. As they spent more time together, the creature confessed and gave Kitty Fish a stone starfish clip he had made. In return, she invited him to her underwater home where she proudly showed him her pebble collection. He was inspired by her passion and decided to start stacking pebbles his own way on land, with Kitty Fish by his side. This creature is a combination of a T-Rex and a penguin. His name is T-Pex, and this is the story from his point of view. T-Pex had a hobby of gathering pebbles near his home and skipping them across the pond. One day, while doing just that, he lost his footing, fell and fainted as the plot required. When he woke up, Kitty Fish was there taking care of him. As thanks, T-Pex shared some chicken he had cooked over fire. Their relationship deepened over time. Kitty Fish, feeling especially close to him, made him a stone seashell bow tie as a token of her affection. T Pex, in turn, would hold her lotus leaf for her when she came on land and taught her how to skip pebbles. Together, they spent their days stacking and skipping pebbles, watching sunsets and living happily ever after. The end. Each set of story is going to go on one pair of slippers. The size of the circles I drew are based on the fact that shrink art is supposed to shrink to about one quarter of its original size. I measured how big I wanted the circles on the slippers, then times four like this to figure out how big I would have needed to draw them earlier. Now it's time to print! The printer can only print on the rough side of the shrink plastic, so make sure that the rough side is facing up. This first print is a test print. I'm using a heat gun to shrink the plastic and as you can see, I'm not too bothered about how well the cut job is. I just need to find out if my size estimation is correct and if the darker panels stay readable after shrinking. My favourite part of the shrinking process is when I get to drop the metal rectangle onto the plastic like I'm squishing a bug. Look at the difference in the colour vibrance before and after shrinking. I'm in love. And as I suspected, I do have to readjust the colours of these darker ones. The printer prints the design on the rough side, but it looks better on the glossy side with that little bit of plastic depth. So I'm also going to flip the images for the reprint. Ta-da! 16 almost perfectly circular panels. The next step is to glue the back of the panels to the crop backings with epoxy resin. Always wear gloves and mask people, you know the drill. I'm again relying on more guesstimation for how much resin I would need. Maybe 3 drops per panel for the total of 16 panels which adds up to 48 drops, then the ratio of the resin to the hardener is 1 to 1 so you gotta divide 48 by 2 to get 24 drops for half of the concoction. Then I drip 24 drops for the resin to get the weight and make sure that the hardener was the same weight for mixing. You know, I briefly considered using UV resin as it's a lot more user friendly but from experience, even good quality UV resin would yellow and become sticky after some time. So epoxy resin is the better choice especially considering it would be exposed to the elements as shoe charms. Carefully pour the mix onto the back of the panel 
add the backing and do the same for the rest. Wait 24 hours and mix a new batch of resin for the front of the comic panels, this time using 5 drops per panel since there won't be backings blocking the way. Again, carefully drip the resin onto the panels and while waiting for it to dry, it is now time for squishy making. The squishability will be from this melamine sponge and the designs will be based on these 4 poses I drew on scrap paper. They're pretty cute, right? All the poses also have an oval base that was measured to overlap and match the holes on the slippers. Now we are going to score the back of the outline onto the sponges. I'm using a mechanical pencil here, but any sharp pointy object should work just as well. Once done, cut off the excess sponge with a pen knife. Don't worry, I'm going to save the sponges for a future project. It's going to be electric yellow with cute red cheeks. Comment below if you know what it is. Next, poke holes where the backing should be with the previous template and use it to check the alignment of the sponge on the slipper. Okay, this part is a little bit finicky. Carve the back of the sponge to match the curve of the slipper. Do it slowly and check periodically so you don't overcut. We are then going to carve the top of the sponge into the general height of the final form. Now we are going to heavily rely on the drawing for the details. This is how I see it in my head. The left arm is the highest point in the carving, followed by the head, body, right arm, then the base. This is kinda how the side view will look like from the base up. Of course, imagination isn't always enough. I also cut out the paper base and kitty fish to use both as guides for me to know where to carve. If you're still watching all the way here, remember to subscribe, like, share, comment, tell your mom. <laughs> your support is the fuel for my passion. Let us grow this channel together. Once you're done with this sponge, keep carving the rest of them with the same steps. Next. We are going to cover all the sponges with a thin layer of air dry porcelain clay. At first I was painting onto the sponge directly, but because of how porous it is, the sponge just absorbed most of the paint and the end result was a bumpy surface I didn't like. This kind of clay has flexibility when dry, so theoretically if I added only a thin layer on top of the sponge, it should be able to withstand some vigorous squishing. We shall see later if the idea works. As you can see, I'm flattening the clay as much as I can with a transparent acrylic sheet. The transparency allows me to easily check if the clay has been flattened enough to cover the top of the sponge. Gently peel the clay off, then push the clay into the nooks and crannies of the sponge as best as you can without breaking it. Again, always refer to your drawing while working. It's off screen, but I'm periodically dipping just the tip of the tool I'm using into a container of water there. This prevents the clay from drying out too fast, helps the clay stick to the sponge and smooths out the clay while I'm working on it. Just don't use too much water or the clay would be too mushy to mould. The small accessories and details like the starfish hair clips, teeth and tail are made entirely out of clay and melted onto the squishies with water. That means these parts definitely won't be squishy, but they are much easier to make out of clay than carved out of sponge. At least, that's what I'm telling myself as a beginner in carving. The back of the sponge is covered in the exact same way. Cut away the excess clay with a scissors, smooth it into the front and use the chance to insert the backings into the squishies. When the clay is dry, I use fabric puffy paint to paint the squishies. Same concept, Fabric paint has some stretch to it and should technically be squishable, so we'll see. The paint is very transparent and takes about 3 layers to make opaque. It dries pretty fast though, so you can layer it with very little wait time. But the flip side is you need to squeeze out and mix a little bit at a time or the paint will be dry before you can even use it. The squishies are painted in the same colours as their digital counterparts 
with blue as the background for kitty fish and white as the background for tea packs. Once done, the squishies are laid out and sprayed with varnish. And now for the reveal! Does it squish? It does! <laughs> Absolutely no one asked for this and nobody would be interested to squish squishies attached to shoes. But who cares? It works! I am so so happy with the results. They came out exactly the way I envisioned, with minimal mistakes which is rare for me. The shrink out plastic I used was the transparent type, so the slipper colours affected the colours of the final outcome. Luckily, it still looked good enough to me, so I decided to keep it. What are your thoughts on the slippers? Would you wear something like this? Thank you for watching. This is Sam, and remember to follow your joy. Bye bye!